revisit yeah. it and go back. Andy, what did you want, Andy Jacobs? What did you want to say? Uh, you do feel that it's very much modelled on Steve Bruce's Steve Barnes books, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's I'll a lot of that. Direct <laughs> relation between Quite derivative. Uh, in case you're wondering what's happened to Andy, he's, uh, we're having technical issues, you've just joined us. Andy, his line has gone down, and, um, uh, and Andy is phoning it in. Um, so, Andy <laughs> Smart is with us. We, 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 we thought your name that, did I mean, lend itself to a kind of, lots of uh, fairly cheesy, day you should have gone into cheesy daytime telly, because I was called, I, I thought done. we'd call this one <laughs> Smart Choice, Andy, Andy Smart, Smart Choice, we could have called it I'll Smart Option, uh, <laughs> and we could th say things like, so where does that movie fit on the smart meter, we could do things like that, couldn't we, uh, it's a terrible <laughs> business, so uh, yeah. that's number five then, Arsenal Stadium yeah. Mystery. Number four is it where you're playing fast and loose slightly with uh, calling it a football film. But I'm, I, well, it's one of my favourite football sequences in a film. So tell us what well, it is. Well, it is, yeah. It, it's Bed Knobs and Broom Six, the five-a-side game. Oh, yeah. Um, they get washed up on a, on a tropical island, and they need to, to get back to real life. They need to get an ambul uh, a little medal off of the king, who's a lion. And so the lion says, well, uh, if you, I, I might be able to help you if you referee to, to David Tomlinson. So David Thomason, it's his first game as a referee, which is so, you know, it's quite a tough match. It is. Um, <laughs> it's true. <because> yeah. <laughs> it's one of the dirtiest games you'll ever see. I mean, it's like, it's like the Chelsea Leeds replay, isn't it? It's a from 71, yeah, it is exactly like that. It's, uh, the, the two teams are called the Dirty Yellows and the True Blues. And, uh, and the opening, and from the kickoff, the Dirty Yellows take the ball down towards the, the True Blues goal. Uh, they've got an elephant in goal. Yeah. And the crocodile cut the ball just in front of the goal, and he pulls out a mouse, which surely is a sick player. And David Tomlinson does nothing about this. And it just, <laughs> it beggars belief some of the fouls that go on. I mean, at one point, the king, who's a lion, obviously, um, he just kicks uh, an ostrich up the bum. And it's, it's just, it's not, it's not on at all. They let it go. With that many cameras in the ground, you think <laughs> these, these days someone will pick that up. I mean, exactly. I think it was re-refereed. They re-refereed the Leeds-Chelsea <laughs> replay of 1970. Michael Oliver did it last week and gave out 11 uh, reds. I don't imagine we'd see a very similar card oh, yeah. Andy, I think so. in the I bend. So. One of my favourite scenes is where they think the Mr. Brown, the referee, David Tomlinson, is dead. And the vultures yeah. come on. They're, they're the ambulance men, the stretcher bearers. And then when and the they realise that he's not dead and he gets up, they're gutted, aren't they, the, the vultures? Yeah. <laughs> they're gutted. Yeah. So uh, well, let's play up. We're going to play a bit. I'll tell you what, we should give... Uh, you can't really play the football match, but we can no. give you one of the songs from the film, get you in oh, the mood. Yeah. Here we go. Bobbing along, bobbing along on the bottom of the beautiful briny sea. What a chance to get to bed to peep at the plants and creatures of the deep. There we are. Uh, yeah. I'm watching it. It's tremendous, isn't it? The, uh, yeah, the rhino reminds that... me of uh, Barry Horn. Tremendous. Play. Yeah. <laughs> what reminds you of Barry Horn? The rhino. <laughs> the oh, rhino. okay. The rhino. Yeah. Fair enough, fair. So okay, that was that was number four. I tell you what, we'll we'll uh, take because uh, unfortunately my line is dropping out quite often, so I could go the full Norman Collier. So I'm okay. missing half of this. I'm sure you're having a lovely time, the pair of you. And uh, we've got three more films. I'll play the one that I think you maybe should have put in there. The listeners can tell us uh, some of their favourites. But uh, Talksport.com text eight ten eight. I think Paul's dropped off again there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> should we run this next one, John? Number three. Hello? Yeah, I think it is number three. What is number three, Andy? It's number three is Shaolin Soccer. Shaolin Soccer is one of my favourite all-time kung fu films. And it's, uh, it's basically a young lad who wants to promote uh, kung fu to the, uh, the people of Hong Kong because they're, they're sort of moving away from it, going into other things. And he comes up with the idea of doing it through football when he meets a, an ex-footballer called Golden Leg. And the stunts in this film are unbelievable. Um, they are incredible. And the football sequences are incredible. It's obviously it's a fantastical film. Uh, you've got at one point they play Tofu United in one of the uh, cup matches, the first cup match, and they win 60 uh, nil. <laughs> wow. Uh, there's some great players. There's, uh, they've got, uh, there's five brothers that play for the scale in uh, United and there, there's mm. players such as uh, Mighty Steel Leg Iron Head who's very good at headers Hooking Leg who's very good at tackling 
iron shirt yeah. who actually uses his stomach to hit the ball into the goal. Uh, yeah. Empty hand, who's the goalkeeper, and lightweight vest, who's uh, got, <laughs> let's say, eating problems, uh, but can jump oh, okay. really high. <laughs> Right. We well, can hear a bit of the trailer, I think, Andy. Would you like to hear a bit of the trailer for the film? Oh, I yeah. think it gives you very much a flavour of the movie. Let's have a listen to a bit of it. Long ago, in this sacred temple, six best friends learned the secrets and mastered the power of an art called... Shaolin Kung Fu. Now... They've lost their way, but one man is getting them back together. Kung Fu is perfect for sports. To remind them of the courage they still have and apply it to a game they've never played. Kung Fu Soccer. There we are. Uh, it, uh, Andy, it's... Uh, yeah. I know what you mean. You're talking about... But it's quite terrible, really, isn't it? As a, as a, as a, as a, you think it's a good film, or...? I think it's hilarious, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's a comedy <laughs> film. <laughs> I'd, I'd say, though, that it's definitely foot up. I'm surprised the ref didn't give it. <laughs> it's a lot, well, yeah. there's a lot, the sort of things you get, again, more reds. I said Michael Oliver should go back and have a look at that one as well. The so, South China um, Post, when it came out, the South China Post actually got a referee to sit down and watch it, and, uh, yeah, he, just, he annihilated it. <laughs> <laughs> you write for them, don't you? In non-league column. <laughs> yeah, I should. Yeah. <laughs> See if they can get you in. So, so so far we've had the Arsenal Stadium mystery, bed knobs and broomsticks. Number three, Shaolin soccer, and yeah. uh, number two, I think a favourite of many people. Um, yeah. So, uh, give us number two. Escape to victory, obviously. If, if it's on, you have to watch it, if, if it and it's on quite yeah. a lot at the moment. So I do watch it quite a lot. But just for the the, the, the players that are involved, you know, Bobby Moore and. And uh, our dealers and uh, John Walk, <laughs> Mike Summerby, yeah. uh, the brilliant our dealers go. Um, uh, the fact that Michael Caine's probably the fattest POW in in the history of uh, the war, um, hmm. and Stallone in goal, who actually when he when he when he joined up with the uh, the film crew and the cast, he said, "Well, I'm I'm insisting that I score the fight, I score the winning goal." And they had to explain to him that the goalkeeper rarely scores in a football match. <laughs> and it might be a little bit disingenuous if he, if he scored the winning goal. So, uh, and I love the, the shots of the crowd with the 70s haircuts and clothing with, that was like loon trousers. And uh, they're supposed to be in mm. 1944 Paris. And uh, <laughs> the, the line where, he, where um, uh, Stallone keeps saying, um, "Where do I stand for corners?" and they just go, they just ignore him every time. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Oh, let's play. They're going to play the trailer for this as well. I mean, I've not ever even yeah. heard the trailer for the film. It's, uh, no. it's it's very old school. Uh, listen to this. In 1942, the Nazis thought they were sitting on top of the world, never suspecting that they could be toppled in one conflict, the most unusual battle of the war. It has been decided that a German national team will play a combined team from the prisoners of war of the occupied territories. That's crazy. Okay, I'm ready to sign up. Sign up. And you ought to be exhibited in Paris like performing fleas. What about me? A stacked game. The Third Reich's finest against a ragged bunch of prisoners of war. In a world. It's that guy, isn't it? It's a, he's yeah, a yeah. world guy. What a fantastic <laughs> voiceover that is. So, it is a brilliant film. Again, it's, it is one yeah. of those movies, Andy, you think, I'll just watch, I'll watch the first 20 minutes, and I'll, I'll just watch, yeah. the, I'll watch, the, I'll watch <laughs> the... And then in the end, you've sat there yeah. and watched the whole thing. It, it, uh, yeah. it does stand up. It's a, it's, again, it's, 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 a, it's a fantastic film. So, what about one or two of those that didn't make it? What about the ones that, that came close? Well, I was uh, my uh, my daughter was uh, banging on at me to get uh, Grace wanted me to put in the uh, uh, Bend It Like Beckham and she's the yeah. man, which, mm. which are, are, are fantastic movies. Um, they sort of uh, they come from the, the original sort of uh, teenage girl playing in a boys team goes back to sort of Gregory's Girl with uh, D Hepburn, yeah, yeah. and, and mm. um, against uh, John Gordon Sinclair's terrible goalkeeping. Um, but she sort mm. of led, uh, led the way for uh, Bend It Like Beckham and then Amanda Bynes in She's the Man is, is a very funny film based on Twelfth Night. 
um, a, a bind at the start of the filming couldn't actually play any football at all but it's it's quite impressive her skill at the end and there's a very funny bit where the ball hits her in the crutch and she's she's pretending that she's a boy in the film and so she has to pretend that it hurts it's very funny uh, but uh, <laughs> she falls for Channing Tatum and he, he he's sort of like he's obviously very confused that uh, this uh, this boy on his uh, team is is, is Fallen for him, and uh, then she has to reveal that she's a girl by lifting up and showing her bra at the end. It's, it's, uh, oh, okay. it's a very funny film. Yeah, it's a funny film. Uh, Porridge, well, obviously. Was, I'm going to sling. Well, you know what? I was about to sling Gregory's girl. I was going to sling into the mix because I'm yeah, football, and that is great. And Porridge, in the Porridge film, was on at the weekend, and uh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a breakout attempt. Well, Barry, the great Barry Rutter, of course, breaking That's out right. of jail. And he takes Godber and Fletcher along for the ride uh, unwittingly, but it's all built around a celebrity coach, yeah. football match. Yeah, that's well, right, mate, the Steve... goodies don't turn up, do they? The goodies yeah. uh, are supposed to play. The goodies and, and David, David Hamilton, Hamilton but yeah. he does. Yeah. <laughs> they've got one weatherman, that's all they've got in the. In the and he, yeah. I tell you, we're going to play yeah. a little clip of that. Before, we, before okay. we get your number one there, and we'll find out what your number one is, they'll play you a little clip from that Porridge movie. Jeffrey Bailden was the. Uh, governor in the film, unlike the TV series. They've played Cat Weasel, of course, for many years yeah. on TV. So let's bring you a little clip of this. This is Fletch. He's on the bench, and the governor's popped out to watch the game, which is underway. Afternoon, Mr. Threadaway. Oh, good afternoon, Fletcher. How's it going? Well, difficult to tell, sir, seeing as we're only ten seconds into the game. Yes, good dog. All right, dog. No, good dog. Good dog. Which of them's the goody? Oh, I don't think he's come, sir, but we have got a weatherman there out on the wing. He says it's going to rain. Oh, look at that. Who will play Slade? Who is that? That's Armstrong, sir. Class player, he's, sir. Oh, he's going out next month. Pity that, if we have another fixture. Yeah, it is a shame, isn't it, sir? He'll be right, choked, he will. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Steve so, Steen this morning. Yeah. You know Steve Steen, who mm. I do a lot of uh, tour yes. folks shows with. He uh, he was actually he's actually in that film, and he, he was t he, he was telling mm. me that uh, it was the football took a whole day to film, and they were at Chelmsford uh, Prison, and what had happened was the prisoners had burnt down D wing, and so <laughs> they allowed the TV people to come in and film in D wing and play on the, hmm. the prison football pitch. But it was February, and it was freezing cold. And uh, all the, 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 the lags that had been there for the whole film, uh, they took hmm. it quite personally, the football match. And a load of actors turned up for the day's shoot, and they got, <laughs> got a good kicking, I think. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Dear me, good job Diddy David Hammond and the goodies didn't turn up, wasn't it, really? <laughs> yeah. so, so anyway, Andy, sorry, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, because the porridge, you traditionally think of it as a TV show, but that was a movie, so it's fine to be in your category. But I think at some point down the road, when we, when we get all the thing, keep going, um, we, we should look at football in TV programs too, because I was looking at one of my yeah. favourites is uh, On the Buses, which I checked out this morning, and it's, oh, it's yeah. really good, and it's a wonderful game yeah. of football, in fact. So we can, <laughs> down the road, we can have a look at that, I think, too. Thank, thank you, caller. Well, we'll certainly yeah. add that to the list. <laughs> and then, yeah, well, he found it in a was... competition. He thinks he, he thinks he's sussed out the who are you competition. <laughs> <laughs> Andy from Chiswick. <laughs> so that's a good winner. We're gonna have... Well, uh, can I yeah. just say I was in the, I was in the yeah. TV uh, 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 film about the football called Bostock's Cup, written by the brilliant Chris England. And, oh, yeah, uh, I remember that, yeah. It's, yeah. Well worth, it's well worth checking out on, uh, on YouTube, Bostock's Cup. Uh, Nick Hancock's oh, in it, good. and uh, uh, a very young Ralph Little plays left back. It's all about mm. Bostock Stanley, a third division team who win the FA Cup, and uh, they, they get together 25 years after the event, and it's sort of uh, revealed how, how they managed to win it. But there's some very, very funny jokes and very funny scenes in it. Good stuff. Andy, before you give us your winner, we're going to play a clip from it. I think people may okay. well have guessed it. Let's, uh, it was on, I watched it at the weekend. I was talking about it yesterday and I've forgotten how great it was. It had been 11 years since I watched it. So yeah. let's give you a little moment from uh, the film. Well, I might as well tell you now. You lot may all be internationals and have won all the domestic honours there are to win under Don Revy. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. 
It's a brilliant performance. I'd forgotten how brilliant yeah, it was yeah. the other day. Uh, having watched him in quiz last week, of course, the damn United, Andy. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Yeah, it was, I mean, just uh, it was. A, it's a love letter to Brian Clough, and what a shame that he never got to manage England. It would have. He would have been much better than Revy, that's for sure. And um, yeah. And it's a, it's really about it's about the love affair between him and and Peter Taylor and the, and the hatred that he had for Revy that came from Revy just not shaking his hand at that cup game. It's just it's mm. incredible, really, um, and just a joy to watch. And about how football was changing at that time, you know, Jim Broadbent gives a fantastic uh, uh, display as uh, Sam Longson, the Derby County chairman, who, who suddenly yeah, yeah. sort of they started to realise that the managers and the players had the power and the, it was the end of the days for local chairmen who who would sort of put their money into a club just to keep it ticking over. Mm. Andy, we've got to leave it there because uh, we, we've run out of time. And obviously, we're having all these technical issues that they're trying yeah. to get to grips with and they're going to need a little bit of time to do that. So, uh, we're, we're hopefully, we can do this uh, properly uh, next week. But we do appreciate you you joining us in the Heath Robinson style to get through this. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and we'll do another five with you next week. Good man. Thanks, Andy. All the I was best. Think, I was thinking baseball next week, yeah. Oh, All right. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. There we are. There's Andy Smart there working his way for his top five force in Smart Choice. So he can come up with a better title. Do let us know. Well, thank you, caller. I think we're going to leave it there because after three o'clock, we're going to bring you a My Sporting Life with uh, yeah. Steve McLaren and Mark Sag as they, as they attempt to sort out the issues uh, they're having today. So that's us for today. Quite a lot of what we were hopefully going to bring you today, we can bring you tomorrow, but we do need to give our technical guys time to sort things out before drive and, and everything else is going on this evening. Tomorrow, from one fingers crossed. But coming up next, Mark Saggers, Steve McLaren, My Sporting Life. Talk Sport. Talk Sport. Lockdown Nation.